Hello everybody, Shocker Ninja 1000 here with Funny for Duty. Welcome to get back to more Pokemon Heart Gold. In the last episode, we made our way inside the Equitex City um, gym. We, we didn't have enough time to tackle the gym leader, unfortunately. But we will do this episode. This time, a couple of things I'm going to be doing immediately before tackling the gym leader. I have like a failed recording off camera. And... Um, just going to close my door for a sec, so that way the light don't let him in. There we go. So, yeah, I know. I'll admit. I'll admit, I'm not a very, um, professional Let's Play recorder. <laughs> I always let things distract me, and I shouldn't. But, anyway, first thing I'm going to talk about... I leveled up my Pokemon off camera, yes, including Pinsir. I leveled up Pinsir to level 28. At level 25, he wanted to learn Vital Throw, which I exchanged for Seismic Toss. Um, and also, Fugo at level 24 wanted to learn Defense Curl, but I said no. Tyra at, I believe, level 25 also learned Agility, which I replaced with Leer, because I'm never actually going to be using that move since I got special attacking moves. And Ghastly, I leveled up to level 28. He wanted to learn Payback level 26, but I said no. And I know you're thinking, you're probably thinking like, wait, hang on. Why is my Ghastly still a Ghastly level 28? Because we all know what level he evolves at, right? The reason why, and I'm going to be doing this right now. That rare candy that I found, I'm going to use it on Ghastly here. Because at level 29, he wants to learn Shadow Ball, which I would highly recommend you teach him. If he evolved immediately, he would not be able to learn Shadow Ball at level 29, but instead at level 33. So, yeah, it's about time we get rid of Nightshade. And even better, at level 25, Ghastly will evolve. Meet Haunter. And yes, upon evolving your Haunter at level 25, he will want to learn Shadow Punch. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend it, honestly. But what's even better is I'm going to be showing you something else. Go into the Union Room. Oh god, saving a lot of data. That's going to take a while. Um, yeah, I've got a second DS running with Pokemon Soul Silver, and um, I did not think this through. <laughs> okay, here we go. You can do this also in the majority of Gen Four games. Just talk to a run. Just talk to anybody you meet. I've got um, two devices of the same thing. I wish I could actually like ask a friend round or something, but honestly, it's kind of silly. Okay then, so... What we're going to... Yeah, doing it's actually you see the Pokemon at the very bottom of the screen. So yeah, we're going to I'm going to do like a double trade. Where I'm going to trade Haunter and Pidgey right back to one another. Because as you pretty much can tell Haunter 
is one of very few Pokemon who evolve by trading. And since I got two DSs, I thought it was going to be real helpful. And now... Haunter has evolved into Gengar. And you're probably thinking, why does his shiny colouring look exactly the same as his normal colouring? Yeah, I will admit, that is actually very, very silly. But of course, I'm going to do a double trade, so I'm going to be trading, the ga trading my original Gengar right back. Once it loads, that is. Um, yeah, I think the only thing I can honestly say with it coming to the shiny difference is the color of the eyes. Because normal Gengar's coloring with the eyes is like a dark red, but in a shiny coloring scheme, it's kind of a more brighter red, I think I would say. Almost as bright to the point that it might look pink. Yeah, sometimes trades like this can go on for roughly six and a half minutes. So you can see right there, if I bring it closer, brighter eye colour. It's hard to tell with the fact that you're recording the DS screen directly. So, yeah, you're just going to have to believe me with that. I mean, you, you did... You would believe me anyway, because... You saw... Joker as a ghastly, when he's got the blue fog all around him. And now we're going to leave. Thanks to me having a secondary DS, we now fully have a Gengar on our team. And we can now move on to tackling the gym. But before all that... Something else I actually want to bring up just before I forget. If you go into the Pokemon, because while I was doing training off camera, our mum called, and we're going to get a Pasho Berry. Right, have a look at the Pasho Berry. I actually don't think I've ever heard of that one before. Oh, it weakens super effective water types. Apparently, we got five of them. <laughs> Convenient. Alright then. Onwards to the gym. And don't worry, I have tackled all the trainers off camera, so you don't have to worry about that. Lyra is calling us, just wants to talk about her Meryl again. I am not interested. See, this is exactly what I mean. You ha you're forced to have a phone call from somebody, and it's just time-consuming, really. Here we go. It's good of you to have come. Here in Equitech, Pokemon have long been revered. It's said that a rainbow hurled Pokemon will come down to appear before a truly powerful trainer. I believe that tale, so I have secretly trained here all my life. As a result, I can now see what others cannot. I see a shadow of the person who will make the Pokemon appear. I believe that person is him. And yeah, you believe that when you see it. And yeah, just like what I said with the um, Whitney gym battle, I'm not going to do the gym introduction thing anymore. It was kind of getting a bit tiring really fast. So Morty starts off with, well, as you can pretty much tell, Ghastly. Ghost Poison type, level 21. His entire team, and I'm not kidding about this, because in Generation 2... There weren't a brand new ghost type Pokemon created, which means the only ghost type Pokemon are Ghastly, Haunter, and Gengar. And yes, that's what his entire team implies. His entire team implies with the ghost poison type of the Ghastly family, all with levity for the ability. But this Ghastly, level 21, has Lick, Spite, Mean Look, and Curse. 
And what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to start off by using Thunder Wave. And hope for the best that he gets fully paralyzed on one or two occasions. And hope he doesn't paralyze me with Lick. Yeah. I say it out loud, or in my head, when I say, I hope it doesn't happen, and it happens. And he got two critical hits in a row with Lick. So yeah, the reasoning why I taught Tyra agility is because it sharply raises her speed and lately in her battles, she has been running a bit on the slow side. Now, Curse there with a Ghost-type Pokemon using it, it sacrifices half of his health to inflict a curse on the opposing Pokemon to um, cut away their health at the end of every turn. Gonna move my iPad up a little bit because I think I think I'm actually moving it down slightly. And now his second Pokemon, Gengar, level 25, holding onto a citrus berry with the moves Hypnosis, Shadow Ball, Mean Luck, and Sucker Punch. And yeah, as you can pretty much tell, I'm not gonna keep going over the typings and also the ability, because like I said, every one of his every member in this team is a ghost poison type. And carry levity for the ability. Right, we're going to use a soda pop. But I think it's going to be a waste, really, because I think I know what he's going to do. Yep. He's going to use Shadow Ball on Tyra, and it's going to be enough to one hit kill. No matter, yeah, you're probably thinking, why did I not level up Heracross? Well, Heracross is not really a member for our team, and oh, wow, I actually really can't tell the difference. I mean, just looking at that, they look exactly the same. Wow. Okay, so he uses his Shadow Ball. Let's use our Shadow Ball. We're going to have a Shadow Brawl, <laughs> literally. Oh, and also, when you have a Pokemon that's been traded, the EXP they gain will be slightly better than they originally was before. Now, this is one thing I actually have a huge question about. Do you know earlier on when I said Ghastly evolves at level 25? Well, I'm not kidding. He's got two Haunters in his team. This one is level 21 with Hypnosis, Curse, Nightmare, and Dream Eater. And if we look at his second Haunter... ...is level 23. How the hell is he able to get two Haunters... ...to evolve from a Ghastly... ...under level? Yeah, I was, I was on about this with Faulkner when he had a Pidgeotto that was below level 17. Because Pidgeotto evolves from Pidgey at level 18. And he had a Pidgeotto at level 15, or whatever, I don't know. But yeah, that was kind of like a breeze, really, because honestly, it was bound to be true. We was going to get Ghastly to evolve in the future anyway. And I thought, why not make it now? I don't think our potentials are so different, but you seem to have something more than that. So be it, this badge is yours. We received a Fog Badge from Morty, and it was even more of a kicker. Pokemon up to level 50, including traded Pokemon will obey you. You'll also be able to use Surf outside of battle, and TM30, which is the move we finished him off with, Shadow Ball. It causes damage to opposing Pokemon as a special attacking move that's 80 power, 100 accuracy, and has a chance of lowering the opponent's special defense. And yes, you're probably thinking, yeah, Shadow Ball is actually a physical attacking move in Gens 1, 2, and 3, but this is not a Gen 1, 2, 3 game. This is a Gen 4 game. Okay. Down we go. And we'll run back to the Pokemon Center to heal up our Dratini. Okay. 
I know it feels like I'm being cheap, honestly, with Morty, but really, Morty is basically like Shabi um, Sabi First I say Shabrina, then I say Sabrina or whatever. Sabrina. You know the gym leader Sabrina in um, Saffron City in the Kanto region? Yeah, uh, I'm not going to lie. She is a hard gym leader to battle against in the Kanto region. Morty is basically like a copy of her. Because um, Sabrina's strongest Pokemon in her team is actually um, her Alakazam. Whereas, um, Morty's is Gengar. And those two Pokemon basically have the same thing in common, Alakazam and Gengar. They both hit very hard with special attacks, but they can't take any hits at all with physical attacks. What I mean by that is, if they if you hit them with a physical attacking move, they're more likely going to get KO'd. Now, we are going to be running close to the end of the episode here, so I'm going to be um, spending a quick time going over the Route 38 encounters. So we're going to be standing here for the rest of the episode, so I do apologize about this. If you don't want to hear the bio, just skip this bit, just go to the next episode or something, okay? So, in Route 38... Starting off, you will be able to find Eradicate, same case scenario with Rattata as um, H. Yeah, it's the same case scenario with Rattata back in the very first week we encountered them in. If you decided to not go for Rattata and then chose to choose Radicate, you can catch them here. It is a is a useful HM slave, but does have a little trick hidden under its fur. If you decided to catch this over Rattata, it will be carrying the move Hyperfang which is an 80 power normal attack with a 10% chance to flinch. Its opponents... I oh, say to flinch its opponent, sorry. I always have a break at the wrong convenient time. And with it being much faster than before, it will have a better chance of getting that flinch to pop up in situations where it may be needed the most. But it won't help against rock types, steel types, or even ghost types, in other words. Next up... And I'm sorry I had to say this. The next Pokemon is Meowth. That's right. Yeah, honestly. Did Team Rocket disband this Pokemon or something when we beat them? Because as we never got to see Jesse and James again, um, Meowth just suddenly appears here. Um, yeah, but honestly, it is where it makes its first Wild Encounter debut in this game. The most deadly move it can learn by leveling up is Slash at 70 power 100 accuracy that has a high critical hit ratio. It only helps with its high base attack and speed, but it's not so good at taking hits when it has to. But when it evolves into a Persian, it becomes a hybrid attacker, so you might not want to go for Slash, but he can learn Power Gem by leveling up if you wanted to consider teaching him that instead. Um, but other returning Gen 1 Pokemon you can find here, Magnemite. In Generation 1, this was just a plain electric type, but in Generation 2 and onwards, it gained an extra type of steel. This was the centerpiece of advertising the steel type when Generation 2 was new, and was also the only Kanto Pokemon to have been given the steel type. With it now being an electric steel type, it has 11 resistances plus the immunity to poison. It isn't a very defensive, so it wasn't a very defensive Pokemon in Gen 1, but now it is when it gets to become a Magneton. Magneton does have another evolution, but that's for Sinnoh to, to explain the detail. Magneton has a base special attack of 120, which is really good and then and its defense of 95, I've actually written it down as dense apparently, uh, but its defense and special defense, I'm oh, sorry, hang no. its physical defense is base 95, 
and his special defense plus speed is 70. Balancing some, but I but it can be a brilliant Pokemon to have on your team. But just watch out if you're dealing with any ground type Pokemon. That's all I can honestly say. And another returning Pokemon you can find here, and thank the Lord it actually probably might be. Remember when I in my Let's Go Eevee LP, we used Farfetch. Farfetch will always be known as an underrated Pokemon to me. Great attack, great speed, can learn Swords Dance and Slash by leveling up, which is a deadly combo if able to learn it and use it efficiently, or effectively, or whatever. But this Pokemon was given a rumor to have been given an evolution back when Gen 2 was new, but it was scrapped at the last minute for no apparent reason. We all wanted for we all waited for years back when that news was spread. But wait until Sword and Shield, because that's all I can honestly say about Farfetch. I think you can tell immediately what I mean because if I go over it, we'll be here all day. But there is actually two more encounters here, one of which I do not care about, the other one I do care about. I'm going to go over the one that I do care about first. 4% of the chance of encountering, encountering this aggressive Pokemon is Tauros. Just like Farfetch, it is ruthless with its attack and speed, but with intimidating for the ability, it could also be more defensive than it already is. It can also gain the ability Anger Point, which maxes its attack stats whenever hit with a critical hit. So if fighting this Pokemon, do not by all means get a critical hit, otherwise you will regret it. And we got two more encounters very, very quickly. Mill Tank. 5% of the time, you'll be able to find this Pokemon, and it is a really... Hang on, 5% of the time, that is really slow and annoying to beat. Oh, sorry. Actually, no, 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 no. Wait, Mill Tank's not only... Uh, I don't even know. I don't even know what I was mentioning with this ride anymore. I, nobody cares about Mill Tank, honestly. It's a 5% encounter that is really slow and annoying to beat. That's what I'm actually meant to say. If you fancied making the same Mill Tank that Whitney uses, all I can say is good luck. It does gain access to Rollout, which is boosted in power when you use Defense Curl, but also knowing the move Milk Drink to heal half its HP, you'd need to hope to find a way to stop it from healing, by all means. And finally, if you have the patience to do this, 1% of the time you can find a Snubble. This Pokemon is sort of a strange Pokemon. A baby bulldog to be known as a fairy Pokemon. Yeah, I don't get it either. It can learn all the elemental fangs on the bright side at level 1 when you evolve it into a Grand Ball. But thinking of a great way to use this Pokemon, I would have no idea at all. If I was you, I would not stress myself out. Or, I wouldn't stress myself out in trying to find this Pokemon, honestly. Because I think it's going to be more likely going to get KO'd in one hit all the time. So, yeah. That's all the encounters in Route 38. And, speaking of which, with all those encounters, there is an encounter in this route I want to catch for my team. I'm going to see if I can find him off camera. Next time on Pokemon Heart Gold, you will see me encounter... That new Pokemon for our team. See you guys then.